Hey everyone, in today's video, that's right, we're talking about the Weber griddle insert. Now, we've got two different options for you. We have a Genesis option and a Spirit option, but today I'm gonna show you everything you need to know on how to use this on your grill. So step number one to adding in the new griddle insert is to go ahead and remove your grill grates, and if you have it, your Weber crafted frame kit as well. Step number two, we'll go ahead and remove the plastic from our grill grate. Like I said, this already comes pre-seasoned, so I'll tell you what, we're gonna get up and cooking a little bit faster today. Okay, we went ahead and added the griddle into the grill, and you can see we've got the vent holes in the front and the grease opening in the back. That's where we're gonna push everything down into the grill to get into your drip tray. Now, speaking of drip trays, be sure to check this before every cook, and if you need to replace it, replace it, but you always wanna make sure you've got enough room in here for those griddle memories. You're gonna use your three main burners, number one, number two, and number three to control the temperature of your griddle. If you have a sear zone, go ahead and leave that sear zone burner off. These three burners and those flavorizer bars will do a fantastic job controlling your temperature. Talk about quick and easy, right? Super fast and easy to get that into your grill. Now, like we mentioned, don't forget to give that drip tray a quick examination, and if you need to replace it, definitely do that before you start cooking. Now, as you can see here, I have the lid open because anytime that I have this turned on, warming up, cooking, or cooling down, I definitely wanna make sure that lid is open. Now, when you think about temperature-wise, I always uh, make the suggestion to start a little bit hotter temperature than you think you need, because I'll tell you, when you get ready to add your food to this, it is going to drop temperature just a little bit, so by starting a little bit higher, you'll make sure that it can recover a little bit faster as well. Now, like we talked about, you're gonna use those burners to adjust and control your temperature today, that makes it super easy. And then when it comes to temperature, your food is going to dictate the temperature you cook at, right? So think about things like pancakes, uh, cooking those at low to medium, uh, smashed burgers, think about cooking those medium to high temperature, or as I like to always say, the higher the sugar content, the lower the temperature I'll cook on the griddle, the higher the fat content, the higher the temperature I'll cook on this griddle as well. Now, once you're all done cooking and you're looking to store your griddle, well, first thing you can do, obviously, store it right inside your grill. Now, after you've scraped it and cleaned it and gotten it all wiped down and ready to go, go ahead and put a light coat of oil on your griddle and then leave it stored right inside your grill with your grill covered. You will be ready for cooking the next time you're ready to fire up the griddle and get ready to go. Now, let's say you're ready to turn your griddle back into a grill. I'll tell you what, we've got this great griddle storage bag for you as well, so once again, scrape it, clean it, wipe it down with a light coat of oil, and into the bag you go, now storing it somewhere cool and dry, protecting it from the elements. Your garage, probably a good place to store that as well. But no matter what, when you're done cooking, we've got two great options of storage for your griddle. Not bad at all, right? I get two cooking tools out of one. I get a grill and I get a griddle. Hey, now speaking of griddles, stay tuned because coming up, I've got a great video for you. It's how to season your brand new Weber 28 inch griddle. That video coming up next.